<coughs> right, here's the start of another project here for me. This is my uh, 120 inch Harman motor. I bought this back in uh, 91 I think. It's a limited production motor they made back in the 80s and very early 90s. Kenny Harman died uh, back in, I think in 89. So this is one of his motors. There's very few of these around. This one's a brand new one because I never used it. Did a lot of work on it off and on trying to make it work but it's a uh, Basically, it's a big piece of crap, but uh, oh well. So this is the first big aftermarket motor you could buy back in the day. So, like I said, it's advertised 120 inch motor. It's actually a 117 inch motor. It looks like a shovel head, but it's not. It just has shovel rocker boxes on it. So this here is a a dual carb motor. Right now, I got the head flopped around backwards, so it's XR style. Obviously, it looks like I'm trying to put a turbo on here. This here is an Atlas Pro Stock drag frame from back in '92. It's an all chrome alloy frame, thin wall tubing. It's been sitting for 25 years here, or however many years it's been now. This is 2014, so whatever that is from '91, '92. Set up for a car tire in the back. So, this is a Here's a your regular car tire back here. It was originally set up for an 8-inch drag slick. That's a 7-inch drag slick there. I used to use on my other bike. So this here is a 15-inch car rim style wheel that I bought a lot of years ago. This is a 235 60 15-inch tire. It fits in here pretty good. You see how the chain line will lines up up here with the primary right now. Gives you room for a chain. This is a Nine inch wide fender, it needs to be nine and a half to ten inches wide, so I gotta widen it. This is a set up for a four speed tranny in this frame, it's how old it is. Of course, it doesn't fit. Out of all the trannies I got, I got Torque Box, I got Baker trannies, and four speed trannies, obviously. And this here is just a standard Evo soft tail five speed, and it's the closest thing to fit in the frame. They hit pretty heavy here in the backbone. It's like the uh, frame is like the motor, it's all made wrong. You can't put the motor in the frame, it hits everything. Here's I'm hitting my oil pump down under here. So the transmission doesn't line up, the motor sits too low in the frame, hits on the frame reel on the other side, you name it, it doesn't fit. So anyway, this here is a turbocharger I picked up years ago. I uh, think it's a T3, T4 hybrid, whatever the fuck. Came off a quad that used to run up at uh, Pike's Peak Hill Climb. <laughs> Set up for a Super D uh, carburetor, s s It's a suck through car turbo and not a blow through. So, should be decent size. So, this is just your standard soft tail primary setup over here. There's my fuel pump down there. I'm going to run the fuel tank here in the back. Maybe put a battery there, I'm not sure. We'll have the oil tank up here in the front. Maybe the battery in the front. That way the turbo can dump right into your tank. Run this thing on E85 alcohol, gas. So I have to have a lot of fuel. I need like 15 gallon tank, so. This is gonna be a street bike. I was gonna originally do as a land speed racing bike, but we'll do them both probably, but mainly street. We got something to play around. So, <clears throat> anyway, this is the, what we got, I don't know how you identify what the hell these VIN numbers are supposed to mean, but when Kenny Harbin sold out, or his wife did, I guess, place up in uh, San Francisco bought the motor, it's called the Fab Shop, that's why it's got Fab on here, I have no idea what number series this goes off of, how do you tell what number and series this motor is. I have a customer has another one motors that are brand new here in the shop that's from the mid 80s and it's got a different number system on it. So I actually got two of these motors in the shop here and they're both new. I think I wasn't the only one that couldn't put these things together. But um, you know, I spent a lot of time redoing the ports on this. This was the race version so it had, it had carburetors without manifolds on them. It was set up for a um, McKinney car, it was like 40s or something, I think is what they originally set it up with 44s. Anyway, I uh, modified the porting a little bit here. It's 
These are actually two inches across through here. I copped an area so uh, blowing alcohol drag boat motor on the porting. So I didn't flow quite as much as they did, but I got close. It definitely flows a lot of stinking air. So you can see how they're both pretty big. Those are two and a quarter inch valves up in there, in case you're wondering. <laughs> so this is a stock 74 inch flywheels in this motor. So it's just under four inch stroke, three and 31 30 second. And then we got four and five sixteenths bore plus 25. So it's because they couldn't make the cylinder standard. They do everything so screwed up on this motor. It's a dual plug motor. You see, I got a spark plug comes in through the top here, and another one on the other side over there. Basically, the castings are, are the same castings. So you just tie your machine these for your parts, so you can flop these things in there all you want. The cylinders all fit either hole, frontward, backwards, makes no difference. You can put the carburetors in the middle where they run stock. Stock, they run a carb this way and a carb this way. <clears throat> With a turbo, I'm going to put both exhaust on this side to blow into my blower in a turbo and then I'll have the intake come out of here and come up into here with some kind of injection system. One thing about new part, new modern times, you got more options for doing stuff. So this here is the head. Let me go on the other side here. So these are your exhaust ports here. They actually use shovel intake valves in here. So these are 1.950 valves. So that's what they use for the Intake, I mean for the exhaust, excuse me. So there's your piston. Put one of these rags down here. <clears throat> Scrape up this motor too much. So there's your combustion chamber. So here's your hand, so it gives you an idea how big everything is. This is only like a 9 to 1 motor, it was a street motor. It's perfect for turbocharging. You can put a lot bigger valves in this motor. It, you can put your finger in between these valves. So I think this thing would clear like 700 TD lift. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so you can put, uh, I'll probably go up to two and a half inch valves or something. Something big. Two and three eighths at least. Learned a lot over the years on how to do stuff. I did this list back in the 93, 4 time frame. So. You can see how I maximize the material. <laughs> Nowadays I know how to weld a lot better. So we just fill the head up with a weld and put whatever we want in there now. So anyway, that's what that all looks like. This is your piston. It goes up and down. Pistons were extremely heavy. I lightened the piss out of them for like a week. They're a lot lighter than they were originally. Nowadays, you just buy pistons and it'll be half the weight. <laughs> so back in the 90s, we didn't have that many options. So, but anyway, like so normally this thing goes on this other direction. Normally this goes on this direction, which is how the cylinder's going to be on right now. So here's where your carb would be coming out this direction. Which for a street bike works pretty good because it keeps the carbs tucked in real nice. So it's actually a good design, but with a turbo, I want to. I want to have the pipes coming out right here together. So the actual machine that's had wrong, they put the rocker box bolt pattern to go. It actually bolts on this way. These holes are wrong. Another reason why it was never put together. Things are all made wrong. But uh, anyway, that's how these things work. So like I said, it works like this normally. So I want to use the zippers up pro flow pump, which I don't think they even make any more. Well, I got a bunch of these things new, so it's all right. I want to use them. They're big. They're pretty big gears. Look at the size of the gears inside this thing. They're just huge. But uh, I'll wind up doing some kind of a good gear set in this thing, and I got some big racing clutches I can put in this thing. So it's gonna take a lot of pull the power back on this thing. Going by the head flow, this motor should put out 190 horsepower on gas. And then with a turbo on there, you could easily double that pretty easy. So we're talking a lot of potential power here. Frame's pretty strong though, like it is an old drag frame, so it's, it is made to take the abuse. So I like clip-ons. I don't know if I'll keep these on here or move them up the top. I haven't decided yet. Right now, i got to have them at least in this position to ride it. 
I got my old PM uh, dual disc front wheel up here in the front that they didn't make for a long time. I heard they were starting to make them again. Well, that's an original one. Obviously, I got my drag slick on there. So, it's pretty. It's going to be a project. So, right now I got a couple days in the mock up, just getting this thing to this point here. We wind up getting a one inch spacer offset here with a five speed. With a four speed, I think I was running like an inch and a half or more offset. It was ridiculous. These motors are left offset in this frame quite a bit already. So, but right now it all lines up. I can actually probably move it into a three quarter offset right now, I think. So, anyway, that's what it looks like. What up?